Welcome to 20 at 10 with Nat. My special guest tonight, Andrew Delaney of Arlington, Texas. Andrew and I go way back to October 2018. I met him. What's up? Met him uh, on a very dark porch outside of a saloon in Dripping Springs, Texas at the Dripping Springs Songwriter Festival. Hi, Joanna. And uh, I believe he was wearing a very long trench coat or pea coat, very long, but it looked like a trench coat in the dark. Um, and I met him through Tom Meany and it was delightful. And then we all grabbed dinner together and uh, Andrew has a very interesting background. He has released nine full-length albums, uh, the latest of which is called Whatever Still Remains. Uh, he's basically won all of the contests. So if you've heard of a contest, he's probably won it. Um, in 2018, he was selected um, by Falcon Ridge Folk Festival at, for the Emerging Artist Showcase. And uh, in 2017, he was a he won Songwriter Serenade. Uh, he, also in 2017, uh, he was a Rocky Mountain Song Contest finalist, and uh, he was an official selection at the HP Lovecraft Film Festival for his music video directorial debut, Howard. Very cool. Oh, awesome, Joanna! You saw him there. And then in 2016, he played the main stage at Kerrville Folk Festival, before which he'd been a finalist in the New Folk Contest in 2010, 2013, 2015. So he's done all the things. And then in 2020, he's been producing other artists, such as Justin Pickard from Dallas, Kate, Kate Clem from Nashville, and Emily Barnes from Denver. So Andrew, Super cool cat, and he's not quite here yet, and I'm unsure how to contact him because I don't think he's on a... Hi, Ari Hi Ariel. Um, all right, give me one moment. Oh, if you have a question for him, you have time to submit a question real quick. Um, I'm reaching out to him. I don't see him in here yet. Oh, there you are. Cool. I didn't know. I don't know why I didn't see you before. Okay, I'm inviting you in, Andrew. Hey. Hello. There you are. Were you in here the whole time? I could, couldn't find. I you was. I was. Sorry. I was here the whole time. It's cool. I'm. Uh, I'm sneaky. You like sneaky. a big fat ninja. A ninja, nonetheless. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. What's up? Hey, it's good to see your face. Yeah, it's good to see anybody's face. I know. <laughs> uh, thank you for being my guest tonight. Yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for calling me. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm glad we found a time that worked. Um, well, I so I did. I read a lot of things. Yeah, you have a pretty impressive background. I knew some of it, but I didn't know all. And I'm sure there's more too. But um. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I try to I try to stay busy. I guess I don't know. If that's um. How have you liked producing other artists compared to producing yourself or working? Uh, on your I, I hate producing myself. I don't like doing. It's uh my last record. I did almost completely alone in my house, and it was like one of the most lonely professional experiences I've ever had in my life. Like just sitting and like playing my own songs to nobody and then being like, well, I guess that was good. Thanks, Andrew. And like, <laughs> just like, and like, cause, and that was like, it was a, it's a really like small acoustic record. Um, and so that, that was like, that was, it was kind of a pain, but like when I'm working with other artists, it's way, way uh, more fun. Uh, the Kate Klim record that, that is, I mean, sort of got delayed by this whole nonsense um is uh I, I don't know it's one of my favorite things i've ever gotten to work on it's it's so good i don't know if you're familiar Ooh. with kate 
Are there, um, are there, I realize it's maybe currently in process. Is there any hint of a release date on it? Has oh, no, we have no idea. I think, I mean, like our official date uh, back when we first started working on it was like uh, first quarter 2021. Oh, okay. Um, so, I mean, theoretically, you could still make that deadline. Uh, it's, it's largely done we still have to i mean we have to like cut vocals and stuff on it but like we did all the all the backing tracks and all the overdubs and stuff so a lot of it's done uh it's just we can't be in the same room together <laughs> to like finish the damn thing so uh you know i have just had to deal with this issue to record a single that's mm -hmm. currently in the works that i think i literally just got a final mix back for so oh nice yeah yeah, I'm making a record um, right now with doing all this distance stuff, and we're all like, my drummer recorded from Austin, and then the bass and guitar is being done in California. Uh, we just tracked who's your drummer? in Vermont. Uh, Josh Blue. Okay. Uh, he plays for uh, Kelly Willis and Bruce Robinson. Cool. Met him through Scott Davis, if you know Scott over there in Austin. But, uh. Ariel's asking a question. Same room with me when Andrew and Kate played with Lisa Bastoni. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Points. Yeah? Yeah. Probably. Um, that whole thing. Yeah, I was, I was in that room. <laughs> I, I was certainly there. I don't, you know, Folk Alliance is always a blur. Like, I never really know what's going on. But, uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed that. Was, I, I think I had maybe played with Kate once before. Uh, but we've been friends forever. I met her at Kerrville 2010. She beat me at New Folk. Oh, yeah. Andrew is another person I saw at Folk Alliance. I keep mentioning it's a theme in my show. I keep, like, having well, yeah. people on it. It's the, uh, I mean, it's the, it's the common thread, certainly, with this whole big songwriter community. Like, we all go to Folk Alliance and, and uh, stay up embarrassingly late. and Way too late. <laughs> screw each other and try to get gigs. It's been really good though. I've been, I've never gone to a music conference until I started with Americana Fest last September. And then I tried yeah. to go to everything, <laughs> which turned out to be in my favor since they're all canceled now. <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, yeah. yeah, just cause I was like, well, I guess I gotta, I guess I'm a hundred percent in and I gotta do everything I can do. Yeah. That, I, that's what I feel at this point. Um, you know, I just, I got to go to the conference. I have big, uh, big presence at Swerfa most, like pretty much every year for the last 10 years. That's cool. Um, but now I go that to some. That was a cool experience, Swerfa. That was my first Swerfa and it was. Yeah. Maybe not ideal because I still worked a day job during the day on right. Friday. Right. Ugh. But like the time I was able to spend at the conference was still really, really good. So. Good. I can't Excellent. Really well, glad you had a good experience. Um, can I ask you maybe something related to Folk Alliance? What has been the most beneficial? So my roommate is fond of saying, you know, 90% of life is showing up. Uh, and I have come to agree uh, and see the benefit of that. And um, I feel like that has been a game changer in me locally with getting involved with the community locally the music community but also mm -hmm. more nationally and regionally is by kind of showing up at conferences and stuff what would you say for you has been one of the most beneficial things for you to invest your time in and i mean a thing that you go to it could be local like consistently going to shows or like regional or national going to a conference or something what do you think has been beneficial for you she's uh i mean i think career-wise uh Kerrville Folk Festival, uh, spent a lot of time there, a lot of, made a lot of contacts there, uh, especially through New Folk, like hanging out at New Folk Camp. Um, weirdly, like financially, the best thing I ever did for myself was go to Falcon Ridge Folk Festival the one year that I went. Um, I just got like this whole string of gigs, like instantly with no work. Uh, I went and did that, and I think it was I was le I think it was less the festival and more just the moment, and the people that saw me and were like, "Oh, I've heard of that guy," and it was like, like maybe it was me being at Nerfa uh, up in the Northeast, uh, the Northeast Full Conference. Yeah. People who don't 
speak folkies. Um, but like, like, I think it was just the moment and everybody's like, oh yeah, that guy exists. We like him. And, and that tour that I booked after that was like the easiest thing I've ever done where everybody, where it's just like, send one email, get a yes, move on to the next city. You know, like it was great. It was super good. I played a lot of really amazing shows after uh, Falcon Ridge. Uh, you know, Falcon Ridge is, uh, it's, uh, it's rustic. <laughs> it's real rustic camping wise up there. Uh, mm -hmm. I always camp in a hotel because I am not that person. Right. Uh, I'm not, I'm not like, I'm not a warrior who can just deal with like crazy temperature fluctuations and pouring rain and like burning heat and everything. And I didn't, I didn't really expect those things in upstate New York, but that, that's what's going on in upstate New York in, uh, so uh, your... I think it was August or something. Wow. How was your, so did you have a hotel up there? How did that work? Or did you? Uh, yeah, I got like a dingy little hotel off of uh way out of the, my hotel was in, I think the, the festivals in New York, my hotel was in Massachusetts, which sounds more dramatic than it is. Like there was just like, I mean, it was right. Both were right on the border, but like, uh, I don't know. It was interesting. It was interesting. Uh, there's not a lot out there. Yeah, uh, I can imagine. <laughs> but I, it, was, it, was a, it was a cool experience. I hung out with uh, a bunch of good buds up there. and uh, Ordinary Elephant were up there that year. Justin Farron was up there. Yeah, that's awesome. My least favorite ex-girlfriend was there as well. So that was, that was unpleasant. Was she currently your ex-girlfriend or was she your girlfriend at the time? Oh, no, she's definitely, definitely ex. Super okay. ex. Yeah, that's awkward. <laughs> Anyway, no, I don't want to. Uh, I, yeah. I don't know. I don't. I don't know why I brought that up. That seems silly. Well, it's a funny talk. detail. No, it's a uh, great detail. No, it, um, yeah, I guess I don't know. Especially if you had to spend time dodging. Uh, I did. Like, oh, there did. she is. Uh, and bye. I do. Yeah, 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 absolutely. No, that's straight. Nice I seeing cannot, you. I gotta get a drink. I can't. I can't be the bigger person. It's not in me. Uh, it's not a thing. So. Uh, there you go. There you go. There's there's more information that I should have say, shared on the internet. How's that? That's great. That's fine. Shows that what? you're a good interviewer. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what would you say has been uh, the most exhilarating moment up to this point of your music career? And to uh, me, it probably means you were on a stage, but that doesn't necessarily mean it could have been an no. email you received. Um, you know, okay, I, I can give, like... Okay, if there's a tie. Uh, well, there's, I think it's, it's like a three-way tie for three different reasons. Okay. Um, the, like, playing on stage at the Kerrville Folk Festival uh, is, uh, was, was great. And it was funny because I booked that gig and uh, I, don't, I didn't remember doing it, but I set myself, like, a phone alarm reminder for our stage time. And so, like, I'm standing backstage ready to go on to the Kerrville Folk Festival, which I had been, like, attacking that festival for years and years and years, like, trying to get on that stage. And, like, I'm just waiting, like, tuning my guitar, and my phone goes off, and I look down, and there's, like, just a phone reminder that says, the single greatest moment of your life. And I'm like, oh, thanks, me, from the past. So that was, there's that one. Um, my there was a really exhilarating moment the first time I ever heard myself on the radio. Uh, I had a song called Wine and Roses. I think it was started playing on the radio back in 2009. But like uh, this station KHYI here in the DFW area. Um, I just heard that they had been spinning it. I didn't really know that they were going to. And so I'm like, oh, I should listen. And I turn on the radio, and then I, there was me. And it was like, that was exciting. You just call all the people that you know before the song is over and whatever. I don't know. Hey, it's mom. like that moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that, that moment in that movie, uh, that thing you do, you know, where, where everybody's like just jazz and dancing like around. Like in the store? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Everyone's it's screaming and just like yeah, kind of was, kissing random people? <laughs> it, was, it was like that, only I didn't kiss random people because uh, they have germs. But uh, that's what people say now. <laughs> I I've always felt that way. <laughs> Same for the record. And then uh, my favorite my favorite audience that I've ever played for was at uh, Peach Pit House Concerts in Davis, California. 
I don't know what it was. Yeah, Peach Pit. Uh, It was was just um, this woman, Poppy Peach, uh, in in Davis, California. And she booked me with Justin Farron out there. And there was just like this, this magical audience that like we could do no wrong in front of. And I love that. Yeah. So, um, and it was like, it was this house concert, but it was just packed and, and like just great energy in there. So like, uh, I like that. And you know, I mean, I love Rawhide Trail over, uh, over in Austin too. I mean, I can. Yeah. Rawhide. That's a great one. Yeah. Theoretically going to play there at the end of June with Justin Farron. I mean, like, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. It's it's on a calendar somewhere. It is so on a calendar. Supposedly it means something. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll see. see. Happens, hopefully. Um, okay, are you ready for um, a pop question? Sure. Why not? I don't. I don't know what's going on. Okay, I have a board game, and it's just a bunch of random questions. If you okay. don't like a question, just tell me to draw another one. Uh, I hope that it's good. I don't know. This could be death. Let's see. Have you ever eaten a bug? Have I ever eaten a bug? I mean, I don't have an interesting story about eating a bug. Uh, I will say, uh, I'll just make fun of my girlfriend uh, because that's better. Uh, We go out on a lot of nature hikes right now. And uh, we were out there. And this beetle that was about, I mean, it's like it's a significant beetle, like about an inch and a half long. Uh, we discovered it's called an eye to click beetle. If you want to look it up, uh, I'm big on that nature stuff. But like, we were walking through the woods, and this beetle like just jumped out of a tree basically and landed in her mouth, and like didn't like just bump against her mouth, but just like was all in there. And she just like started oh. yelling, and uh she's like oh <laughs> i remember her description of it afterwards it's like it like it was like it had a thousand legs <laughs> and it was just <laughs> she so like spit it out in the process oh, she's like gagging in the middle of the woods and flailing around and she like punched her five-year-old in the face by accident during this whole process and evie who is the five-year-old thought that i had hit her because she didn't understand what was going on and like it was all oh, this chaos gosh. and just this there's this family in the middle of the woods, like laughing and gagging and choking. And it was very, it was a very, uh, oh, like my mouth moment. feels weird. Just like, yeah, to so did story. her. She, uh, she, she hates, she hates insects. She can't stand them. I don't but, hate insects, but like if they are suddenly in my mouth, yeah, just problem. clinging to your tongue for dear life. Like a June bug. I'm thinking of a June bug right now. <laughs> Right. Don't this is not. Like this is not a June your bug. Hair, yeah. You know, and oh, then yeah. you're just like, oh god, get it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I yeah. Oh, anyway, so I'm glad I've given you the heebie-jeebies. So that yeah, there you go. All There's the question. Ooh, okay. <laughs> cool. Well, do you have a question for me? <laughs> do I have a question for you? Um, you know what I want to know? I want to know um, what is it? I want to know this of most artists, but like. What and Joe Crookston asked me this question once. Uh, he said. When you get on stage, what is the experience that you want the audience to have? You specifically, like, what What do you want them to think of you when you, when you get down, when you're, when you're done, like, over the course of the thing? Like, are you trying to, like, do something specific to them or with them or whatever? Um... I think there's a lot of visualizing when you're a musician, like visualizing like the outcome that you want. Sometimes that's a response from the audience. I don't know that I have visualized sitting in the audience looking at myself because that's like a very weird third person thing. Um, I really enjoy I think there are a couple of artists that I really, really admire the way that they, their stage presence and the way that they are. And so I think I would want to be, to have some sort of similar effect as them, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So like, I don't know how he does it, but the way that David Ramirez like controls the room, like owns the room, just him and guitar. And 
like the, he might not with a band, but by himself with a guitar totally does. And it just, I'm just like, how does he do that every time? And then also Grace Pettis, I really appreciate uh, maybe somewhere in between the two of them, like, I don't know. So your, like your video Grace? just froze in a very strange way, but uh, okay. you were talking about Grace, sorry. Uh, Grace Pettis tells a lot of stories, David Ramirez does not. Um, but like they both are really great songwriters, singers, performers. So I, yeah, I enjoy my experience as an audience member around them. And I would want to have something similar, like, and I think it's because there are things in both of their songs that either I directly relate to, or it makes me think about something. So like lyrics, I really appreciate their lyrics and stuff. So I would say something maybe similar to that. All right, well, cool. I don't know. <laughs> I could get more detail, but I'm like, I don't know that it'd get more clear. <laughs> no, I know, you know, I just, I don't know. I loved that question from Joe. So like, uh, I, I, I've passed it on to a couple of other artists and. No, it's, it's great. Always, it's always an interesting thing. Uh, it's always an interesting thing as an artist to, to think about, uh, yeah. I think. Like just to, to put yourself in the audience's shoes and then go, what do I specifically want to do to them? Uh, yeah. You know, I, Ray says I, he wants them to be satisfied. Well, there you go. And then he says he wants to be like Tom, and then Tom says handsome. Tom is a very handsome man. I Tom think, likes uh, your glasses. Thank, well, that's good, because uh, I also like my glasses. That's good. Are they blue, or is that a little, are they green? They're uh, sort of bluish green, uh, teal, I guess. I don't know. I like them. I just, I just needed something. I just like to have some kind of, I'm like, this goth kid who wears black and gray all the time. And I, I just like to have pops of color on my person at all times, just to let people know that I do have uh, like a, a likable personality. <laughs> that we are all similarly like onions and then we've got layers. Yes, yes. And you have um, at least one teal layer. I do, I do. Awesome. All, all right, right. I'm gonna answer a pop question real quick. Have I ever dated a coworker? Yes. <laughs> and there you go. That's all the answer you need to give. <laughs> I was thinking about that. I have gone on dates with, over the course of my life, multiple coworkers, but like only dated one uh, coworker. And so I remember that, like us talking, being like, we have to, tell our manager right if we're gonna like date <laughs> and going i was a lifeguard too so i was dating another lifeguard at the time oh. at a camp so well, there you go yeah there you go they're in shape i don't, um, I don't know yeah so i mean matters. i think i fell in love during a uh, lifeguard training <laughs> you know when you all have to like rescue each other at the bottom of the pool <laughs> oh i don't know i don't like to uh do things outside so i don't know what lifeguard training is like uh, um, you know, I also don't it really just seems think unpleasant. outside, but they didn't listen to me. I was like, that's my last choice. I'd really like to work inside and, you know, in the gift shop. And they're like, sweet, yeah. see you for lifeguard training. <laughs> I was like. <laughs> nice. Okay. Well, yeah. you know. And then it Because that's uh, what I want. I want the person who's saving my life to not really want to be there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh yeah, it was just funny because I like went to that camp and I was like, I I went to that camp to escape dating because all my friends in Dallas were dating people and I was like, I know what I'll do. I'll go to Austin and hang out with all the old volunteers. They're all like retired and in their 60s and 70s. It'll be great. And then I show up to lifeguard training. I don't know what I was thinking. And it's like, you know, 40 college students. And I was like, oh, there are lots of like really cute people here. <laughs> There you go. There you go. Anyways, all right. Do you have a song you want to sure, play? Sure, yeah, I've got some of those. I have this guitar nearby. I'm going to put in my headphones right quick for the sound purposes so your sound doesn't echo back oh, to Oh, okay. Them. Well, that's good. I didn't I didn't know that that was a thing that could happen. 
Alternatively, I could just maybe turn it down, but this yeah. also works. Do what you gotta do. All right, so I just start, right? Cool. Well, what's it called? It's called uh, Feels Like It's True. I spent all day working on string arrangements for this with uh, Emerald Ray up in Vermont. Mm. On ties. <laughs> Let me draw you a picture of a little box house and a couple stick figures shining sun up there in the corner, smiling with the face of God. Blue skies all around, big red flowers in the ground, yeah. They bloom and they tower above all that simple and happy and comfort and love. And this one's me, and I think that's you. The details aren't clear, but it feels like it's true. It feels like it's true. I write you a song, see, I got a voice and a verse and the spirit upon me. I've tried it before, but it turned out all wrongly with folks I remember, remembering fondly. But this time it's different. The rhythm or the tune, the details aren't clear, but it feels like it's true, it feels it's just words in the air, invisible to the naked eye. Just gotta put these rose colored glasses on. Yeah, it looks silly, but I don't mind. Because when we tell our story, we'll gloss over the parts where we're sleeping or boring and hold them all wrapped at the theoretical party we're theoretically talking to. And we'll wink at each other from across the room. The details aren't clear. Yeah, but it feels like it's true. It feels like it's true. Yeah. I like that. Thanks. Ray said he also has a song about rose colored glasses. Well that that's that's good, Ray. <laughs> I, I I've only played one show with Ray and uh I assume this is Ray Prim. I, I just assume. Yeah. I, maybe I'm wrong. Um I can't tell by his uh Instagram handle, but uh you're, you I, know I what? That's play... a big point. It is Ray Prim. I do want to uh, play more shows with Ray. Uh, I had a lot of fun. I was Ray. Me... Pay attention. And... Andrew wants to play shows with you. It was me and him and uh... oh my god! I just blanked on his name. Uh, Brian Pounds. I'm sorry. I don't know why I could. I couldn't conjure up his last name for some reason. He's a friend of mine, and I couldn't do it. But uh. Uh, it was it was it was a it was a fun show uh, at the Saxon, and uh, we spent a lot of time heckling each other on stage. It was good. When were, when were you guys at the Saxon? Oh, I have no I have no idea when that was. Like, was it? But was it like during South by or something? Or like? No, no. Like... It was just it was one of uh, Brian Pounds used to have a, a residency there for a little while, oh, and he had me and Ray okay. uh, at the same time for that. Um, that's cool. I think that's before I knew who Brian Pounds was. Is I is only slightly after I knew who Brian Pounds was. Well, there you go. Um, 
I guess I've known of him for like maybe three years now. Oh, hi. Um, and then I finally met him in person at a wedding recently. Yeah. Like, oh, hi, you're that person that I know about, but I don't think we've met. Yeah. That's an awkward way of introducing myself. That, that sounds like, that sounds like Brian. So there you go. <laughs> um, did you like how I described how you and I met? Yes. It was uh, accurate. Were you and, wearing uh, a trench coat or was it a long pea coat? I, I don't, it's, it's weird because it's somewhere in the middle. I don't think it counts as a trench coat, but it's a, it's a very long coat. Uh, it was a nice uh, coat. I, I found out about that coat. It fits in on the East Coast, but not on the West Coast. I got made fun of pretty badly when I wore it, uh, when I was there, when it was cold in California. So now that's the thing that I know. I have, uh, I have uh, East Coast fashion sensibility. I can see that, I guess. I guess I don't know West Coast fashion. <laughs> Maybe that's why I don't visit the West Coast very often. I do oh, like it's Seattle. lovely. California is lovely. <sighs> I've, right, been, I've been to chance. Oregon, too. Um, just but, for yes. you. Huh? I'll give it a chance just for you. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, Joanna, Brian Pounds makes you sad. Isn't that a t-shirt, too? It is. It's like a whole, it's his whole branding thing this whole branding um okay this is a song i've played a lot kind of a lot recently but uh i have exciting news i'm gonna release it as a single nice it's been a while since i released a thing um and i just got a final mix back tonight so in celebration of that i'm gonna play my corona song it's not called corona it's called heavy um yeah so i'll play that one Alright. Take off that mask you're wearing. You're holding me at bay. I know it's scary sharing the thoughts that keep you away. And I But I want to bear that weight. Are you feeling lost and wondering, will the money come through this month? Will the morning never dawn? again will the darkness swallow us and I know it's heavy but I want to bear that weight with you if you I know you're thinking things in that head of yours. I want to know if we're thinking the same things. I'll never know if you never say a word. If I say this again, will you finally hear me? That I know it's heavy, but I want to be. If you want me to, with you. 
I expected to hear other people clapping just then. I don't know why. Um, well, uh, yeah, I muted every, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, thank you so much. For, hey, everybody, hey, thanks Fun. for hanging out. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, I have you linked in my bio. So mm -hmm. y'all, if you're listening and hanging out and you don't already follow Andrew, you can find him in my bio. And from there, he's on Spotify and I'm sure every other um, digital streaming service available. Mm -hmm. um, so you can check them out, follow like the things that is going on. So yeah. And then I'll be here again tomorrow night at 10. So have a good one tonight. And uh, thank you again for being my yeah, guest. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you'll have a good one.